All right, so Philippians 2, 6. Who, being in the form of God, Christ Jesus, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, or who, although he existed, subsisted in the form of God, did not regard, regard equality with God a thing to be grasped. They're trying to struggle with this translation. The very few Greek words, you have to be very careful of the context. Or who being in the form of God did not consider robbery to be equal with God. Fairly similar. <clears throat> so the Greek word morphe rendered form in Philippians 2.6 in the phrase ho an morphe theo hu parkon rendered who being existed, subsisted in the form of God refers to the external form, appearance by which a person or thing strikes the vision an eternal external form by which but which is intrinsically indicative of the inner nature from which it springs in this case a continual eternal existence of Christ Jesus as God although almighty eternal immutable and holy internally and added to himself humanity you can't take God away from God especially because of the words rendered equal equality with God in verse 6 note that Christ Jesus is addition to himself a perfect humanity which will continue forever, is in view in the next two verses. So, we look at the word morphe. Since the Greek word morphe in Philippians 2.6, I keep on moving down here. Since the Greek word morphe in Philippians 2.6, Get rid of the distraction here. Indicates the internal and external nature, the essence of Almighty, eternal, immutable, holy God, subsisting in Christ Jesus from eternity, uncreated God. Then nothing in this passage teaches that Christ Jesus emptied himself of either his divine nature or his divine attributes. A whole bunch of Christian so called organizations. Yeah, yeah, God left him so he could die on the cross. They're just not reading into that. Uh, they, are, they are reading it to the verse for their own particular bent. Therefore, the phrase emptied himself in Philippians 2.6 indicates that he emptied himself in what sense? In the sense of voluntarily, because he did it himself. He didn't have somebody emptied it from him. So he did it voluntarily, setting aside, deferring his expression as God through the humanity. He added to himself in the form of an expression of perfect humanity. Philippians 2.7, and then we looked at John 1.14. The word became flesh. It didn't say he unbecame God. It says the word became flesh, meaning added to. He wasn't born flesh in the sense of that his deity disappeared. And then all of a sudden his only existence is humanity. For some content, you have to read the words. So he exclusively expressed his humanity during his humanity's ministry on earth. Perfect humanity from the conception birth of his humanity, Matthew 118 Luke 130-35, until his humanity's death on the cross, Philippians 2.8, with the exception of his transfiguration, in which he did express his deity to his, uh, three of the disciples at the Mount of Transfiguration. The perfect humanity of Christ is referred to by the name Jesus, and when the Christ, the Son of God, took upon himself the form and expression of perfect humanity, he did it in order to, to pay for the penalty of the sins of our world. Philippians 2.8 and 1 John 2. 1 to 2. Only the form and expression of Christ Jesus' as humanity could have participated in a sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. For God's holiness cannot be tainted with the guilt of humanity. Nor can Christ Jesus' as essence as God die or change in any way. God is immutable. And when his humanity died, his human spirit and soul left his dead physical human body, remaining with God until his humanity was resurrected in a glorified body. Absence from the body, present with the Lord. At all times, his divine attributes could have been exercised freely according to his will. Although there were pre-incarnate appearances of the Son of God in the past, there was nothing accidental or separable, such as particular modes of manifestation, which may have at one time been part of Christ Jesus' his eternal, almighty, immutable essence as God, and his existence as perfect humanity born of the Holy Spirit in woman, and then at another time separated from it at some content. But I like to rewrite it. So in Philippians 2.7, the phrase rendered Christ Jesus taking the form, morphe, of a bondservant, 
must have the same meaning of morphe in the expression being existed subsisted in the form of morphe of God in the Philippians 2 6 of a continual eternal and inseparable existence for the two phrases are directly antithetical in other words intended to be a parallel contrast to one another so Christ Jesus taking the form of morphe of a bondservant in Philippians 2 7 indicates that his humanity will persist forever from its inception the conception birth of his humanity until his humanity's death on the cross and and even continue forever thereafter through his resurrection on into eternity he's the first fruits of our resurrection with no separation from his deity we're not going to be separated from god the holy spirit when we die when christ jesus took on the form of a bond servant made in the likeness of men he did not separate himself from his eternal form as god but added to humanity himself the perfect form of humanity hence from that time on he subsists as both god and man forever matthew 1 18 and luke 1 30 to 35 now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph before they came together sexually, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. There's the difference. Perfect humanity. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall, his, you shall name, him, name his name Jesus. Name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And for that reason, the Holy Child shall be called the Son of God. Son of God means having characteristics of God. Humanity, humanity birth, and the Son of God, inseparable from that moment on. So the Holy Spirit caused a woman to be with child to give birth to a human son she named Jesus, who is the Son of God, the Christ, imp implying a permanent existence of the Christ, the Son of God, and Jesus together forever, that the God-man, never to come apart as some contend. God didn't have to do this. He could have started over. Philippians 2, 6-8, Christ Jesus being existed, subsisted in the form of God Almighty, eternal, immutable, and holy, did not consider robbery to be equal with God in the sense of regarding it as a thing to be grasped, held on to. He willingly emptied himself out of the outward of the outward expression of his deity, making himself of no reputation by taking the form of a bondservant, by coming in the likeness of men in the sense of voluntarily setting aside, deferring his expression as God, through the humanity he added to himself in the form and expression of perfect humanity. We're going over and over and over this guy because reviewing repeating guess you understand it and you don't make mistakes when somebody comes at you with something something from out field uh, way out in left field so he exclusively expressed his humanity during his humanity's ministry on earth from the conception birth of his humanity until his humanity's death on the cross with the exception of his transfiguration the perfect humanity of christ is referred to by the name jesus and when the christ the son of god took upon himself the form and expression of perfect humanity he did it in order to pay the penalty for the sins of the whole world. Only the form and expression of Christ Jesus as humanity could have participated in the sacrifice for the sins of the whole world, for God's holiness cannot be tainted with the guilt of humanity, nor can Christ Jesus' essence as God die or change in any way because God is immutable. All right, we looked at that now. We have harp agbon, rendered robbery. Now people harp on this in the contest text of Philippians 2.6. New King James Version and King James Version refers to a treasure which Christ Jesus did not think it robbery to hold on to. It is a noun form, in a noun form, which can have one of two basic meanings within the context of Philippians 2.6. Which context do you think it has? An active meaning. Christ Jesus did not think it robbery in the sense of his taking something that doesn't belong to him, taking possession of his being equal with God. And a passive meaning. Christ Jesus did not think it robbery in the sense of his having what he rightfully possesses, but which is robbed for him, his equality with God being of himself, being God himself. So in Philippians 2, 6, the phrase underlined and italicized and rendered in the King James, New King James versions, who being existed, subsisted in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, indicates that in eternity past, Christ Jesus always subsisted, existed, as equal to God, hence he is God. 
So he could not be in an active position of robbing something he already possessed as an immutable eternal possession, that of being God. His essence as God cannot be taken away because God is immutable and cannot lose his essence in any way. Rather, the passive meaning of harpegnon is must apply that of Christ Jesus not thinking it robbery of having the expression of his deity taken away. Compare Philippians 2, 6, who, although he existed, subsisted in the form of God, did not regard equality with a thing to be grasped. That sounds like a little better, more understandable translation. Held on to in the sense of deferring it freely, voluntarily and graciously himself, humbly himself, in order to exclusively express his humanity during his humanity's ministry on earth until his humanity's death on the cross for the sins of all mankind. After all, he had a fulfilled prophecy unto us the son is giving, right? A child is born, a son is given, and he's called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father. Is he not both? Did he give up one for the other? No. Didn't express one during his ministry as humanity except in transfiguration. He chose that of his own free will. Thereafter, his humanity will continue for the rest of eternity as an inseparable part of the essence of God. And I just read Isaiah 9, 6 to 7. Just check out the passage, make sure I quoted it right. Sometimes you go back to the Old Testament and you're amazed. It's already there. Sounds like, oh, well, this is introduced in the New Testament. No, it's already there. For us, for a child will be born to us. The son will be given to us. And the government will rest on his shoulders. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. And there will be no end to the increase of his government and over peace. And so on. Wow. There it is. Corroborates. Are there any errors in Scripture? I haven't found any yet after 30 some odd years of careful analysis. So, jumping ahead to Philippians 2, 7 to 8. Right? We got 2, 7b states that Christ Jesus took on external, internal form of a bondservant, humanity, and C states that he came in the likeness, of the external form of men, of a bondservant, humanity, and Philippians 2, 8a states Christ Jesus was found in the appearance the outward form, schemati, a man, since Christ Jesus is God, and since it's internal, his internal nature and his humanity cannot be like that of sinful man, then his humanity must be perfect without sin, a sin nature. So he cannot sin. So although he came in the likeness, was found in the outward appearance of a man, he could not take upon himself the internal contaminated form of man, but the internal form of a perfect man. Just like we will have the internal form of perfect humanity in our resurrection. So Christ was born with that perfect humanity at conception via the Holy Spirit in the woman's womb. So, 2.7, But made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant, coming the likeness of men, but emptied himself, taking the form of, voluntarily emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant, and being made in the likeness of men, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of a cross. Now, understand this. Other people say, he had a sin nature, you see. And other people say, well, he doesn't have, he's not God anymore. He's only human. They take these words and they try to wrench the context out of the passage and throw in their own understanding that they would like it to say. So being in the likeness of men, Schemati, dative, singular, neuter, nominative of schema, meaning fashion, form, external show, the outward form of man. So Philippians 2.8a states that Christ Jesus took on the outward form, schemati of man, the external appearance. It says the same thing in Philippians 2.7c with the word homoeomatai, external form, shape, or figure. He came, was, made in the outward appearance, the outward form of man, but the internal was without a sin nature. So some people, oh, he had a sin nature. No, this is outward, but inside, sin, no sin nature. He did not have the internal contaminated form of man, because then he couldn't die for anybody's sins. He had to die for his own. Internally, his humanity was perfect. And we can look at that in several places. Having been conceived by the Holy Spirit, 2 Corinthians 5.21. Let's just review 